Welcome to Ghost in the Valley Podcast. I'm your host, Al Cooley. Today I have C. Dale and Mark T.T.H. from the Fallen Hour Radio and the Fallen Hour Radio Podcast on the show tonight. The show got off to a rocky start, but we fell into the groove after the first five minutes. And they have some really great stories to share with us. And we will be right back with C. Dale and Marcus TTH from the Fallen Hour Radio Podcast. What is it about the unknown that fascinates us so much? Is it for the thrill of it all? Or do we seek proof of life after death? Whatever our reason may be, we find ourselves being drawn in by these places and the bone-chilling tales that they have to offer. Tortured souls cross boundaries to reach out with stories that they want to share with us. There are times we simply hear the echoes of a memory on loop. The question that remains is this, are you open-minded enough to handle it? Dive into the paranormal with DC O'Rourke, your personal guide, as we traverse the globe to dissect haunted places in each and every episode of Hauntingly Yours, a podcast for the paranormal where the spirits are always waiting. You are now listening. Today I have C. Dale and Marcus from the Fallen <laughs> Hour Radio Podcast. Wow, we got through that. There you go. <laughs> that no was a wild, ever... wild evening so far. Okay. <laughs> no one's done that bad to my name yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, guys. I mean, uh, did some research on you today, and uh, oh, cool. I, I really dig your 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 videos and everything. Man, it looks like you put a lot of work into what you do. Yeah, it takes a oh, while. Well, thank you. And Thanks. I know it does because I know I did that stuff with videos and production and now podcasting. Right. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, tell me a little bit about your podcast. So, I mean, when we first, uh, I'll start from the, from the beginning. Like is, what uh, birthed Fallen Hour? Right. You want to okay. hear the story how Fallen Hour came to be and how we transitioned? Yeah. Actually, about six years ago, me and my wife started Fallen Hour and we were trying to get into like the entre- entrepreneurship and we said, hey, we can probably start this up and uh, make some money doing art and things like that. And before she even woke up in the morning, I already had the name all set up. I had the Facebook page and she got up. She's like, Fallen Hour, what the heck is that? And I was like, it's a cool name. And and um, so we did that for about a year or two and did pretty well selling art pieces. And we had art pieces up in Billings at a tattoo studio. And that was kind of the end of it. And then we left the page dead for about about a year or so. I think it was about a year, yeah. Right. And then I was like, man, we got to do something with all these followers. And so I wrote Marcus, said, we got to do a podcast. And I did my first podcast and I kind of went on this train of... Uh, you did like, I think three three episodes, was it? Two right, or three yeah. episodes? And it was the Titanic conspiracy theory. And we started there and I said, Mark, you got to get over here and we only had one mic at the time too, so kind of like this kinda, right now. Yeah. But, well, deja vu, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And so Mark comes over, and the whole time he's just dead silent, and just like, yeah, agreeing with me and everything I just say, and all the nodding points. my head for the video, but not the audio. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then we were like, we can take this somewhere and just keep going with it. And then we kept doing podcasts, more podcasts, and then getting into video elements of it, research, looking into audio equipment, and then. A couple of years later, here we are. Yeah. What do you mainly focus on on your podcast? Paranormal? Um, yeah, we actually, um, when we started it, we did, you know, the, the Titanic conspiracy. And he asked me, you know, what, what do you want to do? What, what kind of subjects do you want to talk about? And I just told him, well, let's just do something creepy, you know? Like, that's the kind of stuff I always loved growing up. And so we did a we did an episode, and after that, it just got like a really good, you know, it was really good with (laughs) (laughs) well accepted, I guess is is what I'm looking for. Yeah. And after that, we just kind of stuck with it, you know, just doing like paranormal, you know, folklore, urban legends, stuff like that. And um, we kind of started trying to get into um, 
Native American folklore and their legends and their stories because we're we're Native American. And so we were kind of half tempted to go into that because right. a lot of it you're not supposed to talk about or you know certain mm-hmm. details and it's a lot of it's like kept secret. And so we kind of debated on that for a while and thought, you know, let's just talk about it and see what happens. And we were expecting, you know, some backlash from Native American, the Native American community, but they just loved it. Like a lot right. of them really loved it. They come come out, came out to us and tell us, asking us to do more, do these stories, do those stories. And, and they just, all these stories just kind of started flooding in. But there so was, was occasional. Yeah, there, there. was occasional. <laughs> we got occasional. some backlash from a few people. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're always going to get backlash. Yeah. Right? You know, but uh, yeah. is, it, is it because of the culture that, uh, yeah backlash on or certain things you don't want to talking about there's certain subjects we talk about and i don't know if you can see that in the back but we have deer woman Mm. back there and Mm -hmm. that's a a huge native american uh, urban legend the artist actually got basically cursed out in native american language for painting that (laughs) right (laughs) i heard an art show so i saw this painting and i don't even know if i really knew what deer woman was yet and i saw this painting and it wasn't finished yet and I said, what's the story behind that painting? His name's Zach Faraway from Faraway Fine Art. And he's like, man, this one, it's it's totally out of the ordinary from his art pieces because he's got, it's like more of like a Western style, yeah. Native American style art yep. artwork. And then in the middle there somewhere sits this this piece and it's like dark and black and there's no co- not too many colors in it. And I asked him about it and he said, that's Deer Woman. And I said, I'll tell you a story. I said, I took this down to an art show on a reservation and an elder came up to me and she starts just giving it to him in her in her language and he can't understand her but he catches the name of uh dear woman in, in their language mm-hmm. and when i heard that story i was like i want that painting <laughs> <laughs> and then we kind of trailed into doing the podcast and then we had a lot of people were accepting of it and then people saying you can't talk about dear woman if the ground's not frozen or if the wrong yeah. time of year and yeah certain times of we year were totally off yeah. season for dear woman but <laughs> going with it anyways <laughs> yeah seeing some of your background like uh you said you grew up on the on a reservation mm-hmm. uh did you understand the language or do you speak the language i understand some of it like when um you know my dad's talking to someone he speaks you know fluent uh crow that was his first, the, first yeah, language like, we're crow on my my father's side mm-hmm. and uh he he speaks fluent crow and he'll be having a conversation with somebody and it's weird because like I don't I can't speak it, but I know what he's talking about. You know, I'll be right. able to kind of sit in there and, and maybe jump in and say something, <laughs> but I'll talk in English and you know, they're like kind of like, oh yeah, and you keep talking and so I can understand some of it, but I can't speak it. So. Right. Just like my wife, you know, she's Italian. Her mom and dad both born in Italy and they mm-hmm. spoke spoke uh fluent Italian and she speaks very little. <laughs> but uh <laughs> She can understand the same thing. She can understand, like when she went to Italy, she can understand some of her relatives talking what they're talking about. Yeah, right. You know, but that's to come out and just talk, you know, speak. It's I don't know. She's not very good at that, but hope she'll hope she'll hear this podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> my daughter actually speaks more crow than I do. Right, so yeah. like, hearing her kind of talk, I'm like, what did you call me? <laughs> I had a, an episode a while back, I think a year or so ago. I had. Uh, called uh, Jimmy and Indy and Johnny. I don't know if you listened to that one. The story that was brought to me by the gentleman out of Philadelphia, mm. you know, where he was going to commit suicide. And instead of him driving to, I don't know why he didn't drive to the Atlantic Ocean, he drove cross country to the Pacific. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. To commit suicide. He's driving there to drive himself into the ocean. Wow. And, but on the way, he was something came to him and took him to this reservation. Indian mm-hmm. Reservation. And it's a, it's, it's a true story. And why, what it touched me was because when he talked about this old Indian on the porch of this uh, trinket shop, you know, it was the same thing that happened to me as a child. We got lost and ended up this little Indian trinket shop. There was an old Indian on the front porch whittling something, and he was taking his coffee and taking a spoon out and just letting mm-hmm. the coffee drip back down into the cup. And I was probably about seven years old. And I says, well, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he goes, and he looks at me, so I'm getting the evil spirits out of the coffee. I says, uh, oh, really? And he goes, yeah. He says, uh, 
every living thing has its has its own spirit. Well, years later, I got this story, Indian Johnny, and sure enough, in that story was exactly what happened to me when I was seven years old. Oh, wow. Oh, weird. I love your podcast because, you know, there's not very Native American Indian podcast out there. Right. That I, that I see anyway. But yeah, I, I was really uh, touched by... First of all, you're Native American, you know, and I don't have, you're my first Native American guest on. Oh, wow. Cool. Oh, awesome. So I'm thrilled about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I listened to some of your podcasts. I like the one you had the guest on. It was a sculpture and he was, oh. you guys oh, are making, yeah. uh, he was meant that you had that head. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was Eric. I think Eric just he kept, it was staring at you. You had that, you had that head. <laughs> yeah. was you doing something with the head? I don't know. What yeah. It was, um. He kind of started it, you know, and he and, started, uh, the, he started, the, head, started the whole head and and he pretty much had just the whole head done. And I just started <laughs> adding to it and just cutting things off here and playing. Chopped the I gear felt off. kind of bad because that like, to me, that looked like a masterpiece. So I was like, <laughs> I didn't want to touch it, but he's, you know, oh, I make a million of them now. So I was like, all right, let's start cutting ears off. Doing yeah. this and that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what uh, C. Dill was doing. I was, <laughs> I was trying to do something. I don't know. I don't know. Came I was trying to do an owl blob. with, his, <laughs> yeah, with it like, with like a ghost looking thing. <laughs> you should go. You should go with C Dash Dale. That's that's kind of like a, a rap, <laughs> it's like a rap name, you know. Uh, yeah, that's your I'm, street name. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And I like I like the fact too where he was telling the uh, st- uh, story too, paranormal story as he's sculpture. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that was his idea. It was uh, Tyrell Johnson, and we met him at an art show. And his, I mean, we he was like our last interview that night. Yeah. And he waited for us and we finally got to him and we did an interview and he was like, man, if you were to come over and do a video for me of where I'm, where we still got to do this concept, but it's uh, it was almost the same on along the same lines, but he wants to sculpt something and take us on like a little journey of like talking with us and whatnot. Yeah. And then he's going to circle that back around somehow to the actual piece he's doing. Yeah. Or try to figure out what he's doing with the piece as we're talking and like inspiration would be kind of cool. And I love the way you videotaped that too, going from black and white to color. Yeah. That was, that was pretty cool. That was kind of like a last minute thing. We had some trouble with our video. So <laughs> the lighting, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I, thought, I thought it was planned, man. Cause it looked great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I, for some reason I can't get the color right. I was like, just throw it black and white. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. He put it on there and it actually popped it pretty, out cool. pretty cool. So I was like, well, it looks pretty good. But the camera we had on uh, Tyrell Johnson himself, that's the one we just kept in color and, yeah. It actually came out pretty cool. So, so what, what what was like growing up on the reservation? Oh man, <laughs> crazy! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, was, and, when, um, and when did you? How long were you there? I don't know. Uh, um, well, I was born there, and I pretty much left the reservation when I was eighteen. I think. Yeah, I, I kind of moved. There. I kind of moved around for a while. You know, I moved to um, to Butte, Montana. I moved to California. I moved, kind of moved around, but I came back here. And uh, just moved to the next town over, you know, which is hard in Montana. And it's still, it's pretty close, you know, it's still pretty close to Crow, but 12 miles. Yeah, but 12 miles, mm-hmm. yeah, 12 miles away, kind of came back home, you know, and, and just settled down here. But it was, it was interesting, you know, growing up on a reservation, a lot of, well, it's just filled with culture, you know, the mm-hmm. Native American culture. It is, it's especially around like uh, now. We have uh it's called the crow fair and it's like uh one of the biggest powwows there is in the and, world yeah in the world like we actually have you know uh, movie stars and stuff that come down and uh they actually go there like um tommy lee jones um steven seagal like people mm-hmm. like that michael j fox like will come down and just you know watch the dancers and the powwow and everything and um it's it's actually really cool you know really cool thing to see and um you it's know, a very it's, different place though like, yeah if it you is go, go there I mean, there's kids at, at like eight years old driving a car to the yeah, store it's like, for their grandma. Yeah, right? that's how it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's have like, it's <laughs> like no rules. All the rules go there's out the window. It's, it's, kids <laughs> ride their horses around all the time, all day long. There's horses everywhere down there. People riding horses all day long. Yeah, take a horse through the drive-thru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just a lot of crazy stuff that happens. What's it called? Like, it's called like TP City or something like that? The TP capital of the world. Yeah. 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 Well. Uh, thank you for uh, responding and coming on the show. Oh yeah. man, we're happy to do it. And uh, I seen your dad was on the show too. I like that one. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> his name's Al. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they, they call him Champ. Yeah. yeah. It's, now, Marcus, everybody. you look like your dad. That I, I hear he that does. a lot. He does. Yeah. Everywhere he, I go, they yeah. say it's like looking in a time machine. You know, just <laughs> how how he looked when he was younger. I guess with more muscle. <laughs> <laughs> he saw his story. Was that on the reservation? Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. 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 The same place um, we grew up is where he grew up. So. That was wild. Yeah. And so Dale, see Dale, you must be like your mother. <laughs> I, everyone always says that to me. Yes, I am. I do look a lot like my mom. Mark, what does the uh, TTH mean after your name? That is actually my the initials to my real last name. Yeah, that's my right. my last name is takes the horse. And takes the horse. Yeah. Okay, because your dad was the same way. Oh, yeah. yeah. TTH. Yeah. I've seen yeah. that. So I was like, I got to ask what that TTH was. The only the only reason why I changed on social media is because Facebook didn't believe that was my real last name. Right. It oh, really? kept kicking me off of Facebook. I was like, what the hell is going on? And they wanted proof of my ID so I showed them proof of my ID and they still don't believe me so <laughs> it changed it literally changed my name Facebook changed my name to Enoch I was like how did you know I was Enoch yeah, so <laughs> that's like my mom's maiden name and it changed oh, it to Enoch yeah. which that was kind of strange <laughs> sometimes you think well they know more about you than what you know yeah about that's, that was kind of right weirded me out I was like, that was kind of scary but <laughs> <laughs> take yeah. the horse i like that the way our name was dad always tells us this it's uh it was from a was it a war party or a yeah it was actually a family um the name that takes the horse is actually the short version of the name it's even longer than that it's uh takes the horse from the enemy and it was a it was a family that was actually trained to be stealthy, and they sneak into the enemy enemy camp, and basically steal the horses and try to sway the battle, you know, and like get let the horses free and do that kind of stuff. And my dad was like, "Yeah, so you're uh, for thieves, I guess. <laughs> you're named after thieves." <laughs> it kind of made me laugh, but everywhere <laughs> I go, not really like, take the horse. Yeah. Like maybe it should be. S-T-H. Stole, stole the horse. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. But everywhere I go, like um, out of Montana, let's say, I, I went to Vegas. And everywhere I went, it every time I showed my ID, it was a 10-minute conversation. Right. It always like, is. Always is like a 10-minute conversation about my name. And, you know, they don't believe it's my real name. And they'll, hey, come over here. Look at this guy's ID. You know? <laughs> like, I like the music videos, too, you had on there. Uh, Eunice Enoch for You Say. Yeah, that's my mom. Oh, yeah, that's our uh, mom. Oh, yeah. Was that your mom? Yeah. yeah. Wow, that was really good. I like that one. And I really like Jonah Morissette. Yeah, yeah, that's our cousin. He's our cousin, <laughs> wow, actually. I mean, and she was awesome. I like it. It's like, wow, she's good. I mean, they're both both yeah. good, but I like the videos. I, I, I like the way it's done in the house. And yeah, that was yeah. it was pretty fun to shoot that one. Your podcast kind of like touches on different things, you know. And yeah, the other one I was looking at was the ancient spirits of Christmas, Saint Nicholas, <laughs> yeah. and his shadow, Krampus. Yeah, Krampus. Krampus yeah, that was a yeah. Fun one I mean, I, I was like, <laughs> wow. You're either giving gifts for being good or they're taking them from you for being bad. Or they actually beat you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it promotes child abuse, I guess. <laughs> I just touched on everything that I'm interested, you know, and keep doing what you're doing because it's a great podcast. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. That was, I think that was one of the more structured one we've done in a while. I mean, we do the podcast and it's never, we never stick to the actual subject line i know we always stray so far off (laughs) well usually sometimes the way it is you know (laughs) yeah Yeah. so we have like a we have like a we do five pages of research at least because that gives gets us to like at least an hour because we'll talk for like the first little paragraph and then we'll just trail on for like a half hour and then we have to keep reading down that list try to jump back this last episode we did before um well we didn't release it yet but we uh people were asking us to do another one with our dad you know they loved his stories and stuff so we we brought him back on and i tried to do something to kind of change that like you know oh man we get so off track and, and we don't get all these stories out <laughs> right. so i thought well maybe we'll just mute our mics you know and work. let him talk <laughs> cdl couldn't handle it <laughs> he, he had to unmute his <laughs> mic and knock. start talking and it same thing happened all our mics turned on and I got scolded for something, and it's all on camera. So that was a live stream we did. Yeah, yeah. I think without even knowing that, I'm looking at your dad and looking at Marcus. I'm thinking uh, those guys are connected for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you have a good laugh on this next episode <laughs> that comes out with them. Yeah. We even had to stop. My mom wanted to come and watch. You know, oh, oh, let me gosh. come. Let me come watch. You know, and I told him that's a bad idea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't let her do it, and she could not handle it so, like yeah. in the middle of the recording they're like back and forth you know <laughs> <laughs> she's correcting him yeah what are you proof- talking about that didn't happen you know <laughs> yeah. proving yeah. her wrong and then she's yeah. like oh yeah okay and then <laughs> the smallest subject like uh the make of a car the car that he had, that had during no, the story nothing to do with it started like a 10-minute argument <laughs> i was like nope never again <laughs> 
No, is your, has your mom been on the show yet? No, I want to get around with she was I asked her, I said, Do you have any ghost stories or anything like that? And she says, I have one, but it's not mine. And I was like, I was going to ask her the last time uh, she was here with my dad. I remember growing up in Crow, and at the time I lived in a trailer down by Uncle Ben's house down there. Yeah. yeah. And I would go crawl in the bed with her because I'd get, be creeped out. And me and my sister would do that when we were little. And I remember one night in particular, my dad is at work and the lights are off. And then I, the closet just starts shaking like violently and like this like really hard push on the door. You can hear, see the door coming in and out and we start freaking out. And I just remember my mom getting up and telling it to stop. And she was yelling back at it and she was started to tell it to stop. And then it did stop. Mm -hmm. And we were able to like calm down and go to bed. And I asked her, I think I was maybe like 16 or so I asked her about that. And she said, she doesn't remember that. So wow. I don't know if she actually remembers that or if she's, I don't know. It's so weird. It's like, that's like one of the, one of the most memorable, I guess, memories I had of that house being creepy. Yeah. Yeah. And I've learned a lot since doing this podcast. Yeah. Cause you'll get, like you say, non-believers uh, right. out the wazoo, you know, like, uh, that's crazy. You know, that didn't happen. Yeah. Right. You know, I think it was Marcus that you had on there, your story of, uh, the night on sacred grounds. Yeah. That was like one of the, literally one of the, um, crazy ex experiences I've had. And I never really talked about it, you know, to anybody, you know, just, uh, with family and a few friends, we were talking about doing, you know, ghost stories and stuff like that. I was like, well, why don't we do like, you know, interview people, you know, local people we will start there and we'll interview them and have them tell their story. And he was kind of asking me, we were like, kind of like spitballing how we wanted to do this. And I told him, well, let's just test this out. You know, we'll uh, just interview me, you know, we'll do, we'll do something like that. We'll start there. And that's, that's where that episode came from. But it was, yeah, that was actually a, a very crazy experience to some friends that are pretty traditional. And they even told me that sounds like, you know, that sounds like a, that sounds like witchcraft. It sounds like a medicine, like a bad medicine man doing something to you guys, you know? So I was like, well, that yeah. happened on where Crow Fair currently, well, they have that there every year. Yeah, it actually, it, that, that whole story happened where Crow Fair takes place. We were driving through those fairgrounds and that's, that's what happened, you know, that night. And it was and just, the TP was on fire. Yeah. And like, then you um, went back and it was gone. And yeah. Like we were, we were just, you know, driving around at night, you know, my brother had a motorcycle, I had a motorcycle and we were driving around with two friends and, um, we separated, you know, um, sometime during the night and this is around midnight and we went driving through there, you know, there's no lights in there at all. All you can see is what your headlights see. And I remember we were coming around. It's, it's like a labyrinth of just loops and circles and you know? tons of trees yeah, and tons of trees surrounding this place and, um, and we, structures like, little yeah, little. like, yeah. Like you could just see like the, the sticks and structures of their camps, you know, still laid out. Like they stay out there like all year, they're just stripped down to just the poles. And we were coming around a corner and I remember seeing something glowing and I, I can't remember if she asked me or I asked her, but, but we both, we both noticed it. And so we went around the, around this bend to go see what it was. And it was literally a teepee on fire in the middle of this little field, a full size teepee. And this thing was just going up and she got creeped out. I got creeped <laughs> out. So she made me just turn around and, and leave. And we waited by the park, you know, for my brother to come by because it's a small place, you know, you're going to see him drive by sometime. And he, he came pulling up and they both had this look on their face. Like they just saw something. So I, I thought they saw what we saw and we were all talking at the same time, you know, trying to like <laughs> get our story out. <laughs> and, uh, what happened was he went through that place too, this, the fairgrounds, except he went through a different, you know, a different path. And he said that when they were coming through this path, there's a little clearing surrounded by trees. And he saw a native American dressed in native American regalia. And, uh, he said he was, you know, just described how he looked. And he said he, he kind of like kind of crept up on him, but like kind of coming quick and he had a bow and an arrow and he said he drew his bow at him. Like he was going to fire at him and the girl he was with told him to, you know, to get out of there. 
And so he he started gunning it, and he said he can hear him like whooping and everything in the background. Oh, that's scary. And hearing that in the middle of the night in that place <laughs> yeah. would scare the hell out of me. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So I can understand like why he was so creeped out. And he came to um he came he you know, he told us the story. We told him our story, and we ended up driving through there you know later that night. But this time we took a car because it felt more safe being inside a car. <laughs> and that's when we started seeing all these little um stands in the in the entrances every single entrance of these fairgrounds and it was like it almost looked like a little teepee but the way it could, the only way i could describe it it, it reminded me of bl- the blur witch project right. you know these weird yeah, things yeah. kind of standing up and a medicine bag hanging from it that is you know like if they want to do something like that too that's kind of how they go about it you know they use like medicine mm-hmm. uh, certain kind of medicine um and it was it, yeah, my friends that I talked to that are traditional, they said that that is, that's witchcraft, that's that's bad medicine, you know. And he said yeah. that's what happened that night. So it was. Yeah, because I do know some yeah. paranormal investigators that do use medicine bags to go in for their, like, if they're cleansing a house. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. and that's the, for protection. Yeah. It depends on what they're, they put in it, I guess, and, mm-hmm. and what, what it's meant for. Right. But, you know, you're talking about that where the, where the uh, teepee was not, was it not there anymore or, or just was it burning? Yeah, we went back through there in the, we, we took a Camaro, I believe it was, and we drove through there and we took them where we saw this teepee burning and the grass was totally fine. There was no signs of a fire. There was no teepee. There was no nothing, no smell of a fire, no scent, absolutely nothing. It just looked like that, that area was untouched. So that's what kind of really, really got me, you know, like right. we were seeing me. It wasn't just me. It was the person with me. We were both seeing this thing to go back there literally minutes later seeing absolutely nothing in that area it just it was just like a wow moment you know basically two timelines clashing is that what you're talking about is that how earlier kind of worded it in yeah because uh there was a story about um this guy he was driving i think he was driving home or something and he saw a a native american run by on a horse i think it was on a horse or he was running through the field Mm. but he pulled a tomahawk out and threw it at his truck wow and it got stuck in his grill and he you know he took off went back home and he showed them the tomahawk and everything he told them you know some some guy threw this out my car <laughs> right. you know? dressed up as a native yeah dude. dressed up as a native american <laughs> and it was stuck in his grill you know and he was telling them the whole story and it turns out someone in their family a long time ago said that when he was wa- walking through a field he saw this big steel beast with two glowing eyes coming mm. at him and he threw his tomahawk and stuck it in the face of this this beast and it, it was like these two timelines kind of collided right. that that guy's story a long time ago and his story were the same story right i think you satisfied my uh itch there <laughs> where the heck i was thinking of that now, now we got that sold yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. so like so when we we're kind of talking, like, I thought maybe that's what maybe that's what happened when we were there. Mm. You know, maybe I saw something that was. But it's kind of strange. Some, it's like weird to try to think about. You know, the medicine bundles at the at the entrances, yeah. and it's almost like someone was setting a trap or protecting the place or yeah. something. Like question, like why is all the little sticks uh, like a teepee yeah. tied together? What sticks right. at the entrances? Why would that be there? I mean. If there's a yeah. warning or and that stuff i mean especially native american the the medicine they use it's not something to mess with you yeah. know there was a story of actually in the the crow fair the fairgrounds down there there's a place called the round hall yeah and they had these men come down and they were taking down the round hall they're uh, demolishing it because they needed i guess it was too old and they had what's called hand games there every summer i guess or every mm-hmm. summer around there they didn't know this building uh, when they're taking it down, but this building had to have been, geez, hundreds of years old. Yeah, it was pretty old. And the builders of that structure placed medicine bundles all around the structure, and nobody knew this until these even guys the people it down. that that are in there, you know, playing the game, mm-hmm. they were stashing medicine right. around, you know, the building. They were hiding their medicine bags everywhere, you know, and um, when they took apart this building. They found, you know, all these medicine bags, and there was a person down there um, helping 
deconstruct this building that did not know anything about Native American culture or what it was. And he just grabs this bag and it was a big bag. I guess it was a big medicine bag and he was going to open it up. And another worker that was with them tried to yell, you know, yell out at him, tell him, you know, leave that alone, you know, don't touch that. And right when he told him that he opened it up and his, the side of his face fell and he had a stroke the second he opened up that bag and he was basically well, put it in the hospital. Because right, and that was a documented yeah. case. I've heard about that, you know, it's one yeah. thing you don't want to mess with those uh, the medicine bags, you know, and yeah, especially right. uh, who, who put those together, you know, yeah. who, right. uh, sometimes you'll have an elder of the community put the medicine bag together. Mm-hmm. I mean, who comes up with the story lines for, uh, it's like say a future episode or did both of you work together on that? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we usually have an idea. Sometimes we just wing it. And... <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, it happens a lot. Like, so we both work and I mean, we usually have like at least once a week free. Yeah. And we always pick that day. So we said, okay, we're gonna do that day. And sometimes Marcus doesn't have time to research. I don't have time to research. So we're like, all right, we're both here. Let's just wing this one. <laughs> and then we end up trailing off for like an hour or so. And it's, <laughs> yeah. That was a good podcast. <laughs> I was like to say, you know, sometimes your some of your best vacations are ones not planned. Yeah. Right? yeah. See, Dale, you were at that uh, art gallery. Is that where you oh. got the, pit, the picture the painting behind you? No, that was, I got this a few years back. Uh, that one was actually an art show that we got invited to cover. Yeah. Uh, recover 2021 and that was a pretty cool experience yeah, it, was it was pretty fun, fun. we and actually made a lot of a lot of really cool friends a lot right. of, that's met where a lot we of cool met, people there we met tyrell johnson there and we met troy evans there and we met uh his wife also we met a, a few other ones that are going to come on the podcast yeah. and we'll talk to him in the future so what's the future i mean what's coming up what do you have planned <sighs> oh my gosh we got this <laughs> so of course we got to jump into our halloween series and so we have this, uh, there's a story in my wife's family, actually, of this dancing table. And we always try to top the last year's Halloween series with something like we did the Moss Mansion in Billings, Montana, a historical place. Last year, I don't think we did anything much that no. would top that. But this year we have, we've been trying to get this table for about two or three years now. Yeah. And apparently this table dances and it was, it's, it's, I don't know how long it's been in the family, but for about 40 years now the family decided to bind the table with wire so it wouldn't dance. And there were stories of this table moving at parties and they would dance at parties and smoke cigarettes and levitate and things like that. And the great grandmas have stories about this table. It was, it was made, it was used. uh, They use like Ouija boards and stuff on it and do things like that. That's what they use this table for. And now it's basically, this thing is like haunted pretty much. Yeah. It's made, it was made by a great, 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 great yeah. some grandfather or something and he built all his furniture in his house and there's actually a, a duplicate table like yeah. that that they have and i really want that table <laughs> yeah. i like i know like back like the the spiritual era you know the, the whole when that whole thing was booming i know they there was tables made you know for those kind of events you know those kind of things seances and stuff like that they actually had special tables made mm-hmm. and and they were using this thing you know basically the, the same story you know they're using this the only this table to do that kind of stuff on right. and basically I, I don't know if it was made for that but that's what they used it for and i can't remember what they call those tables but i believe that's what it is you know and that's going to be i think we're kind of undecided i mean we have uh, a few other podcasts coming on for our halloween series yeah. we're starting to shoot in about two weeks or so yeah and we have what well, we have the skull crawlers coming on they're uh they're a short filmmaking group and they also Native American, and they do awesome yeah. short films. They 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 actually uh, they said they wanted to start a podcast too, didn't they? Right. Yeah. And wanted to talk about the stuff, the same stuff we talk about, but they they were kind of afraid to, and they said like you know when they heard us talking about it, like screw it, we're going to talk about it too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's enough room for everybody, really. I mean, right. yeah. What else do we got coming on for the? The Halloween series. Yeah. yeah, they're afraid to talk about that because they're afraid of the backlash, you know. Right. Where they might get in trouble or scolded. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um one of the one of the um the stories they have where they live was one that we covered and it's called the Stakini, you know, Stakini or Stakini Vampire. Right, they're native to that, yeah. that place. And um it's one of the biggest stories there and they actually have some stories to tell us. So that's kind of how we, you know, kind of came together, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And who else we got coming on? For this Halloween, um, Skullcrawlers, um, Ascend and Conquer. Tina Marie 
is coming on. Um, DC O'Rourke is gonna is gonna join us also. Well, I've had I have a, I've had uh, DC O'Rourke. He's uh, yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty cool. And I, I love the way he. <laughs> yeah, these these guys like DC O'Rourke. What I love about their paranormal investigation is first and foremost they honor the uh, the history. I, I believe DC O'Rourke, but he's a historian. Yeah, gives ghost tours. Cool. <laughs> uh, I can't remember all of my guests, but. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a cool. He's a, you you like him? How you enjoy him on the show? Yeah, like I listen to his you know his podcast all the time. You know, like, I like how he you know picks a place and it just gives you the history behind it, right? And like the whole haunted history behind it, right. and, and all of that. It's it's pretty cool. You know, it's one of my favorite podcasts. So we have that. We have the quite a few podcasts coming on. Yeah, we have a couple more too that we're and we're talking about. Halloween about. night, we're going to premiere the the dancing table. We're not sure how we're going to do that. We could shoot in a couple weeks here. We're thinking about maybe doing like a short documentary on that, uh, sitting down with the owner, the current owner of the table, and possibly doing our first paranormal investigation yeah. on the table. And seeing if they let us actually cut the cords on this table right. and see what happens. So we'll see what that, happens. Was my, that was my next question, if you uh, <laughs> yeah. got into paranormal investigations. We've dabbled. You know, we've dabbled in it. Right. You know, um, we've actually, well, actually, both of us caught, you know, um, evidence, you know. And uh, one of the ones that um, I caught was you know, just totally by accident. You know, we were kind of um, shadowing a, a paranormal investigation group, and they kind of took us out and showed us, you know, how they do their thing. And and then one of them was taking pictures, and I stood by her, and and I kind of started taking pictures, and we were just kind of talking and everything. And and then I caught something on my phone, you know, and it's it was so strange because. It was, it almost looked like a Scooby-Doo Phantom to me, you <laughs> right. know? The way it was like, like yeah, thing of yeah, like we kind weird. of, um, she like took us up to like, uh, you know, the graveyard, you know, so oh, yeah, sometimes I come up here, you know, and so I just kind of snapped a couple of pictures, seeing if I can catch something and just swiping through, you know, like maybe 20 pictures. And then in between those pictures, there was something standing in between these graves. Like you can see the grave in front of it. You can see it here and you can see the grave behind it the the next picture there was nothing there it was it only like that one shot in a in like a sheet it almost, almost. looked like a cloak you know like right. wearing a cloak or something and and that was the after i i showed you know showed them that picture when they just started going <laughs> ham on their cameras trying to take a picture but that was the only picture we caught that night and it was yeah it's actually pretty it's, cool. it's something we want to get into it's always interested me i mean since i was a kid yeah and i've always been into creepy things and dark stories or dark history and it's always fascinated me and it's i think it'll be something cool for us to go into we got to first of all buy our equipment and yeah like we use what we have we just started the podcast you know doing the whole paranormal thing you know ghost stories stuff like that and we were already getting invited to places to investigate i was like we didn't even start doing that yet you know people wanted to fly to canada and things like that yeah like the us and canada a lot of places like want us to go down there and investigate and it's funny because we'll do the podcast and a lot of times we'll catch something on the podcast yeah and there was one incident, 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 incident. <laughs> was, uh, I think it was the summertime and we had the AC and, and we did a green screen at the time and the AC is behind me and here's my mic, here's Mark's mic. And we were mid podcast and we heard somebody say, what they like? I'm over here. Yeah, I'm over here. And we both stopped and we're like, what the heck was that? And we, it was in the podcast and Mark's like, okay, timestamp that. We'll just continue. I was like, okay. And so we finished the podcast as, as usual. And then we immediately go to the computer, plug that audio in there. We're like, look, we got to find that. So we go to the, we separate our audio tracks. And so I know which one's Mark's. I know which one's mine. For some reason, when it says I'm here, it wasn't in my mic. It was in Mark's mic. And it was, my mic was the furthest away from the window. And it was close to the, the living room. And so it sounded like it was coming from the living room. And that just gave me the creeps man like <laughs> it's like, like, talking like oh this maybe mic. it's maybe we're trying to debunk it you know maybe it's somebody outside and the microphone right by the the window complete silence <laughs> and the microphone toward the living room and hear somebody talking so it was, and there was nobody in the whole building so <laughs> it was just me and him well you know guys i really appreciate you guys spending your time with me and sorry about the uh, slow beginning but uh yeah, I look forward to see more uh, episodes and uh, definitely got you in my playlist and wish you the best of luck. Keep doing what you're doing and keep me updated. We would like to thank C. Dale and Marcus TTH from the Fallen Hour Radio Podcast on the show tonight. They were awesome. And please check out their links posted at the bottom of this episode. And also go and rate and review 
Ghost in the Valley podcast and the Fallen Hour radio podcast on Apple. We would deeply appreciate that. I'll see you in two weeks with another great episode on Ghost in the Valley podcast.